AI has calculated its moves and the new turn is now unfolding before our eyes. Now it seems Davu engaged a small Prussian force in Erfur. The battle summary shows that we were much stronger than the enemy. Now, interesting, on day 4th at OA, we meet the much stronger Hohenlohe, and the battle begins. Murad is in command, even if he is in the adjacent region of Aina. He has probably joined the battle thanks to the march to the sound of the guns rule, and because he has a fast cavalry corps. The battle will be bloody, though. All of a sudden, our strength jumps from 14,000 men to 50,000. That's excellent. I believe this is Ney's corps actually joining the battle. You might have also spotted a French leader known as Nazuti appearing in Nuremberg. Now, he has probably been wounded in battle and evacuated to the nearby town. Now, this is corroborated by the fact that he has a red stripe over his counter, meaning that he's prevented from moving because of this unfortunate injury and this can affect just about any general in the game. Let's hope this goes well for us. This is gonna be vicious for sure. Now, if we actually stop and take a look at the summary of the battle, we're gonna take a look right now, and essentially the battle summary shows us that the battle has been a total slaughter for both sides, almost equal losses on each side except the French lost too many horsemen and artillery, and I fear this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory. Thanks to the French combat morale, we held the battlefield, but our losses are staggering. There is also a detailed battle report where you can see all units and what they did, but I'll spare you this for now, as it's kind of a lot of number crunching. It has its merits though when you want to analyze and finesse why you won or lost. Let's wait a few seconds so that the turn is finalized. Each turn is seven days in this game. Okay, this is the new turn. Seems we have new friends as Marat spotted Prussian forces coming out of the woods. Total combat power is 490 as evidenced by the number on the counter, and we have good intelligence on them thanks to Murat. We have now to decide what we should do, and the main Prussian army seems to be pretty strong. Let's check Hohenlohe and Oe for now. The Elbe army commanded by Hohenlohe still has a huge number of units for a grand total of 1067 combat power. On our side, we've got Ney. Seems to be about 145 combat power. I think as you can probably imagine, this is bad. Solt is in better shape though. Bernadotte seems to have suffered a lot also. Marat has had his share of losses too, uh, and he's actually facing two Prussian armies. Now, if we actually start moving to the north a little bit, uh, in the north, things seem to be getting better and the road is cleared towards Hanover. Rucho's forces retreated in full force before Davout's more powerful force. All right, now let's reorganize our forces and actually decide what we're gonna do on the next turn. Now, in all honesty, Ney will probably need to withdraw and rest his corps. There's an enemy force in the region, and he can only retreat to regions where France has some military control. For example, Hof has some French military control, uh, as Ayenna, thanks to Marat. Other regions are colored in red, meaning he can't retreat to these particular regions. Now, there are a few things that are actually quite important in the game to understand if you're going to be good at it, and one of those is we need to understand in detail why his force is now weak and down 145 combat power. So here's what we can do, okay guys? Let's go ahead and let's click on one of his units, the 1st Cavalry Division. This unit is made up of smaller elements, as you see on the right side of the screen, and they've suffered many losses in men and cohesion. For example, the Sixem Chasseur is down to 28 cohesion, and the 6th Chasseur has suffered too, and only has about half of its men and its horses. That can't be good for any army when you really think about it. 
If we look over here, the same is true for other units of the Corps. In fact, all these other units of the Corps. I mean, the 1st and 2nd Infantry Division are even down to one artillery piece, if you look to the right, plus their general. Saul's Corps, on the other hand, is more than ready, actually, to go ahead and engage the enemy. Bernadotte's Corps has most of its units weakened. If we check the 2nd Division, we see to the right many elements are damaged, so the situation is not great for us. Who do we have as reinforcements? Jerome Bonaparte arrives at his own pace, but it's not a very strong corps. We also have Agaru with a very decent force. Now, it's really time to act very soon, and it's up to me to decide when to do that, but I think the time to act is now. We're going to retreat Ney to the region of Hof. We don't really want him to fight. We're going to set him in a passive posture, and this way he has more chance to escape the enemy, but at a cost in combat efficiency. Now, if you've played Age Odds games before, and you're an advanced player, it's definitely possible to go ahead and use the special orders that can help you in specific situations. Sadly, as Ney is not activated, he can't use evade combat to maximize his chances at avoiding fighting. Now, if a general is not activated, his command envelope is in brown. When not active, he can't do much more than moving at a slow pace. Check on Contrary Solt. The envelope is white, so he can use any order and can engage the enemy. Bernadotte is also active. And essentially, since Bernadotte is activated, it means we should use the special order Evade Combat. We want to set him in a passive posture, and off to Hoff we go. These men deserve to rest, and let's hope that they won't be caught in a crossfire in the next battle. Probably checking that Jerome is still on his way to his destination. That's some good news. We're going to move to Oe. Also, Ajaru's force and the Guard Imperial. We need all of our men. Alright guys, for now it looks like the Emperor will actually remain in Bayreuth. Just for now. Now what about Murat? His men are not in very good shape because of the last battle where he joined forces against Hohenlo. Some of the regiments have essentially only a very very tiny portion of their original army stacks, and this is a problem. Now with the Prussian army before him, he has no chance of taking Leipzig. We should instead find a force to counter the enemy, Lane is the perfect candidate. Let's take a look at him. Okay, let's go ahead, let's click on him. You can see here he is not alone in the region. He seems to have captured some artillery and logistics. Let's take a better look. Yes, Prussian artillery, nice. This will be a nice opportunity to demonstrate how you can merge several forces into a single one. Um, and there are actually two methods for that. So let's place the three stacks a little bit better that we have within the region and see how we can add to Lanay's Corps the captured units we just got. Now, I'm going to give you the simplest method first, and this is really using the drag and drop method. When you see the cursor pulsating over an army stack, release the mouse button where you want to go, and there, we've just added the artillery. Second method is by using the tabs at the bottom of the screen. Now, this is an easy way to manipulate stacks when there are many regions uh, and the area is cramped with units. Take the tag and actually drop it onto the target tab, and voila, they're merged. Now let's send Lanay forward to the incoming Prussians. Let's hope he can prevail. Get those muskets ready, boys. Now, if we actually take a look further north, we've got the powerful force of Davu. Perhaps we went a bit overboard by sending him, and he will be missed in the south. But it's too late for that now. Rochelle's is apparently hidden in the city protected by a garrison, the Coward. There's also an outside force, a Prussian force outside the city. This is in fact Saxony troopers, uh, but they're actually commanded by the Prussians. Now I'll make sure that Davout is sent against the region and not chasing Rochelle. 
that might be a chance for him to enis for escape, and we don't want that to happen. As you see, Davu is activated. The envelope is bright. He will be activated each turn because his rating as a general is 677. The first number is his strategic rating and is the chance to be activated and is done by rolling a six-sided dice, so he can't fail. The two seven are respectively his offensive and defensive skill in battle. Frankly, the man is a genius. But he's also helped by the fact that he's part of an army structure, led by Napoleon. We left him at by Ruth, remember, so Napoleon is giving Davout plus one in all three stats. Davout's real skills are in fact 566, but he's boosted by Napoleon. Now, Davout is in an offensive posture, and that's good. We'll probably brush easily against the defenders and start the siege in the city, and perhaps Rochelle will get caught in this particular siege. Marat's going to stay put. We'll take the risk, as hopefully Linnea will counter the Prussians, and they're not that strong. And then we'll go on to Leipzig and Dresden. If we manage to beat Hohenlohe, then we are done.